Today we're on the battlefields of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. In this video, we're going to check out two of the most famous locations from the second day of battle. The Bloody Wheat Field, also known as the Whirlpool of Death, as well as Devil's Den. No spot on the battlefields of Gettysburg is as confusing as the famous wheat field. Owned by Gettysburg farmer John Ross, the wheat field was the scene of brutal and chaotic fighting on the afternoon of July 2nd, 1863. Regiments from no fewer than three Union Corps were thrown against Confederate troops in a series of confused attacks and counterattacks. By the end of the fighting day, the wheat field had been trampled into a carpet and the ground had been stained with the blood of over 6,000 men, killed, wounded, and missing in the fight. I can't believe we're gonna do this, but we're going to walk across the bloody wheat field itself. Let's go. We are walking across the bloody wheat field itself, the whirlpool of death. On July 1st, this was just a normal wheat field like any other Pennsylvania. On July 2nd, this would become known as the bloodiest piece of ground at Gettysburg, where for two and a half to three hours, there was nothing but crazy, crazy fighting. All right here. So on July 2nd, we see the Confederate Army capture Devil's Den, which is right down the road, pretty much through these trees right there. We also see the Confer Confederate Army capture Peach Orchard, which is right up there. That'll be another video in itself. But what happens is they all converge right here in the middle at the wheat fields. And that is why we see the most fierce fighting, the most casualties right here in this field. Now one of the craziest stories and one of the reasons why I really wanted to see the wheat field, obviously there was a lot of fierce, fierce ba battle, battling that happened here. Both sides, a lot of casualties on both sides, but what a lot of people don't understand about the wheat field is there was there was just so much going on. It's really not that huge. Like, okay, you know, the third day of battle when they do pickets charge, that, that's a huge field. The wheat field, this battle happened like just, you know, right here where we are right now. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is what this field saw. So let me go back here. The second day of battle, when the battle was over, reports from soldiers would say, you, if you walked this field like we are now, you could walk across the field and not even touch the ground because you would just be walking on top of body on body on body of dead soldiers. All right here. And uh, it's very hard to, to picture and imagine today, but I mean, you just have to think about it. All right here. Another crazy story about the wheat field is, and this one came directly from one of the soldiers that was wounded here, but the next night, or that night after the battle, uh, there were so many dead, so many wounded soldiers laying here. And this particular soldier told the story of there was wild hogs in the area and the wild hogs would come in and they would snack, I guess, as you, a better term of putting it, they would snack on the soldiers that were, you know, laying here. So what he would do, he was kind of like half dead, half alive. He would have his bayonet and whenever hogs got close to him, he would kind of stab them to, to make them, you know, run off. But I, I could not imagine being here after the second day of battle at Gettysburg, July 2nd, and you know, you're not only half dead laying in the field, but you also have hungry hogs trying to come at you, 
right here. And then you gotta fend them off, you know? This is uh, crazy to see, crazy stories too. Now, unfortunately for both sides, the wheat field does not matter strategically. Devil's Den does not matter. Thousands of soldiers die for ground that doesn't really matter. The objective is Seminary Ridge and Hill. So lives and time are wasted because Sickles decided to move his line forward earlier that afternoon. Man. I'm sitting in the whirlpool of death, the bloody wheat field at Gettysburg. So 200 some years ago when this happened, just imagine, it, it is hard to imagine today. I, I understand that, especially for you, you're watching this on YouTube. It's, it's hard for me to kind of imagine this too, but man, just, just imagine, take a second, just imagine where I'm right now, another hundreds, thousands, of soldiers all laying next to me. It's very, uh, <laughs> at a loss for words. All right, personal note for me to you. If you're watching this, and you, if you decide to come here to Gettysburg and lay in the wheat field like I did, it's not recommended, don't do that. I just found three ticks on me. So, do not recommend that. Just giving you a heads up. Now let's head down the road to check out Devil's Den. Welcome to Devil's Den, a boulder-strewn hill on the south end of Huck's Ridge. This was once the backdrop for intense carnage brought about by artillery and infantry fighting on the second day of battle at Gettysburg. On July 2nd, 1863, more than 5,000 soldiers from nine different states fought a bloody battle at arguably Gettysburg's strangest place. Well, friends, we've made our way to Devil's Den. I've, uh, this is just one of those other locations here at Gettysburg's that's very well known. The boulders here are all, they would have been here all during the battle. Confederate troops would have tried to climb up and take this hill and they did, but it was at a high cost to the Confederate side, obviously, as well as the Union side. But now let's take a walk up to the slaughter pen at Devil's Den. I'm just gonna take y'all on a tour with me around Devil's Den. As you can see up there, I believe that's Big Round Top, right up at the top. But like I said, all these boulders would have been here. Unfortunately, this middle part's still under construction, so I'm not too happy about that. But if you take a look at that tree right there, so that is what they call a witness tree. That tree would have saw would have seen the battle July 2nd, day two at Gettysburg. It would have seen the slaughter here at Devil's Den. So one of the famous photos taken here at Devil's Den would have been taken right here, which I'm not too happy that it's under construction, but. So on July 5th, two days after the war ended, um, a photographer came out here. His name was Alexander. I forget his last name to be honest with you, but he came out here to take f aftermath photos of the war. And there was a Confederate sharpshooter that was dead pretty much in this spot. Some believe that he propped the soldier up pretty much against in that corner there and took the photo. Um, actually, this is probably what he looked, would have looked like, but if you look at the photo, obviously I'm not going to throw it in here because of the YouTube <laughs> restrictions on that, but if you want to look up the photo, you could see him. He's propped up against here. But yeah, this is one of the main things to see here at Dell's Den. Mm -hmm. 